I have a temper, okay? When I was in the state senate, I wouldn't make a deal. When I was a councilman, I wouldn't make a deal. And as mayor, I wouldn't make a deal. How, how can you describe some of the actions of him without calling him a, a goof? And he has enemies. He also has friends, but there are few people in between. Jimmy Griffin does not inspire indifference. You love him, you hate him. And he likes it that way. The 55-year-old South Buffalo former grain scooper has an uncanny ability to charm and infuriate you within a matter of minutes. He wrote the book on controversy, not so much for what he has done, but for how he has done it. When the former councilman and state senator ran for mayor in 1977, he won the seat by a whisker over Arthur Eve. During that election, the word feisty was indelibly etched in Buffalo's consciousness, because that's what Jimmy Griffin was. Four years later, Griffin ran again, this time with no substantial opposition. But after eight years, feistiness may have worn out its welcome. To some, it's become obnoxious. It's no longer uh, feistiness. It's, it's ridicule and it's rude and it's uncalled for. I've had the distinction, the dubious distinction, of being in office as long as he has, and I've seen him go from bad to worse. Guys who like him, the women who like him, they call it the feisty griffin. But if you don't like that, you call it the arrogant, obnoxious griffin. Candidates have now come out of the woodwork to run against him. Names like Arthur, Siwak, Bacos, Batista, and the Coalition for a Better Buffalo. Why? His personality's changed. Jimmy Griffin now is not the same Jimmy Griffin. I think what he has done is he sort of cut himself off from people. Very few people would argue with the accomplishments of the Griffin administration, such as right here in the theater district or the downtown redevelopment, the waterfront. But what seems to be emerging as the biggest campaign issue of the 1985 race is Jimmy Griffin's personality itself. I think Jimmy did things in the, what he believed to be the best interest of the whole community. and. Oftentimes, it got people's nose out of joint. Well, every time I go somewhere, people will come up and say, gee, uh, Ed, I really like the way that you and the mayor work together. You're at least trying to do something, and you're working positively. You're not attacking one another. But in the process of running his city, he has alienated many. Former friends are now his enemies. Yeah. In all respect to the mayor, I don't want my child to speak the way he does. <laughs> My concern is that the mayor is going to overlook the most important expenditure for our city, the education of our children. To many people, the future of a city depends on the brains of its children. But since the beginning of the Griffin administration, education has been the field on which a pitched battle has been fought. The figures are clear. The city of Buffalo spends less per pupil, according to the State Department of Education, than any of the five major cities in the state of New York. In comparison to three other cities in Erie and Niagara counties, Buffalo comes in last. Yet Jimmy Griffin, accused of siphoning off money for education to other city services, refuses to compromise with his nemesis, school superintendent Eugene Reville. Education to Mayor Griffin is his lowest priority. His critics say Jimmy Griffin wants to turn the clock back to when he was a kid in the 1940s and dropped out of South Park High only to finish up later. A lot of things have changed since Jimmy Griffin was in school. Schools now have computers, they have state-mandated programs for handicapped kids, and all of that costs a lot of money, money that the Griffin administration doesn't seem too willing to spend. And that has earned Jimmy Griffin the label of anti-education. The kids are getting a great education in our schools. We've got the best integrated school system in the country. And it's nothing personal between Gene Ravel and me. I just wish the taxpayer had a little more concern about what's happening in our schools. He has no interest in it, and he has no understanding of it. And, and uh, uh, I let someone else judge the mayor's ethics. I'm going to judge the facts of the matter. He is not a friend of public education in Buffalo. I don't think he values education highly, and he is now in, uh, locked in a battle with the Board of Education for the funds. Take a look again. 101 million to 196 million in seven years. I don't think that's being an enemy of education. It's a question not so much of who's right and who's wrong, but of priorities. How much is Buffalo willing to spend on its school kids? And is it money being well spent? I think he's done an excellent job as mayor. I, I don't think anybody could deny that. If he's driving down the street and he sees some uh, garbage on a corner, he'll call it in to be picked up immediately. He treats the city as if it's his own living room. It was a year and a half ago that he stopped speaking to me. Uh, previous to that, any position that I would take on an issue which was contrary to him, he didn't necessarily take it personally. 
The mayor's treated me very, very shabbily. Relations between mayor and common council started at a high point in 1978, but they haven't been the same since. Jimmy Griffin has his way of running a city, and that's the way it is. The council can help at once, but God forbid if it should get in the way. And I wish they'd realize that the reactions, they can delay projects, and if they delay it so long, it's going to cost money, and it might ruin a project. Relations have deteriorated to the extent that the mayor began calling them goofs. Maybe it's a word that you shouldn't use, but gee, how, how can you describe some of the actions of him without calling him a, a goof? I don't think he's doing it for the entire council. I think there's a few council members that rub him the wrong right way. As the head of the city, I think it provides a, a terrible example, uh, and if you think about it, for children. While relations between the mayor and the common council have rarely been smooth, probably the biggest controversy and disagreement came last winter when Jim Griffin's nominee to be Streets Commissioner was shot down time and time again by the Common Council. And that sent Mayor Griffin out on the streets to head up the snow fighting effort. If at first you don't succeed, take matters into your own hands. The mayor himself led snow fighting efforts in a highly publicized campaign this past winter. But it's the measure of a man who would resubmit a nominee's name 12 times just to have it shot down 12 times. Yet when it comes to the business community and relations with Erie County, Jimmy Griffin's star has rarely been brighter. I think he's a mayor with integrity, and I think he's got a lot of guts, and he stood up to a lot of the self-serving interests, and uh, he says it like it is. One of the things that I really enjoy about the mayor is that, you know, if, if he says something, if he gives you his word, you can put that in the bank. You can put that in the bank. Some of the articles, they've been uh, out-and-out lies, out-and-out lies, slanted slanted thing but but that's their they, see that's their problem bob that's not my problem do we want a mayor who who admits that he doesn't read the newspaper as he has done so many times in the past jimmy griffin will use as his source of campaign strength the old first ward here in south buffalo but how do you run a successful campaign when you won't talk to one of the three commercial television stations in buffalo and you won't talk to the only newspaper in town in fact, his honor has even ridiculed prominent print reporters in less than gracious language in public. But the management of the Buffalo News wouldn't even allow us to talk with those reporters. Perhaps not as well known, though, was an incident last winter in which Jimmy Griffin tossed a Channel 2 reporter, Ed Caldwell, right out of his house. You uh, have to, you know, do what I'm telling you to do. Because you won't come in my house again. In fact, get out right now. Four and seven were covering a story when Edward, uh, when I came back from uh, Boston with Jimmy Militell and Fred Fidel. We're working on an eight movie theater complex in downtown Buffalo. Channel Cinema, they own Channel Two, and Channel Two wasn't covering a story. So me, like a jerk, I get home, and I call Channel Two. I says, "Look, you're missing a story that Four and Seven has, and this is your parent company that want to do this thing." So now his honor doesn't talk to Channel 2 either. We have tried to talk to the mayor constantly, and we're always told, or I am always told, that uh, the mayor is too busy. The first question people ask me is, when, when, they, when they hear that I'm a city hall beat reporter, is, oh boy, you must really have a hard time talking with the mayor. Uh, and we really don't. I wish all public officials were as accessible as Mayor Griffin. And then there's the kid glove treatment the mayor gives Channel 7's morning gab fest, AM Buffalo. He used this cushy forum to name his top political appointments, effectively denying equal treatment of the story to other news organizations in town. The mayor does allow some newspaper reporters to submit questions to him in writing. But if I don't do that, uh, I end up uh, getting the short end of the stick from the, the, the I don't have any problems with you. I don't have any problems with the radio. Because what you hear me say and what uh, you see me say, that's what I say. And if I do foul up, that's my fault. It's not yours. But with the newspaper reporter, they have about five hours to write up a, a paragraph. And they could. I don't think uh, I'll ever change. I don't think the people want me to change. I don't think my wife and kids want me to change. They're the most important. But maybe that's not quite true. Maybe Jimmy is changing. Just look at this. First of all, I... The problem with the old Griffin is that the appeal is limited to about 20 to 25 percent. In electoral in elections, we have to count votes. So in order for him to win, he needs to go beyond that old Griffin's appeal. And that's why you're seeing the new Griffin, the 1985 and 6 model, which is being unveiled here at this announcement. Wastiness, some call it abrasiveness, was a selling point in campaigns of the past. But maybe it's worn out its welcome in 1985. 
Yet it is an essential ingredient in Jimmy Griffin's personal style, and even his enemies acknowledge that. He really does view himself in a tough guy image. I think he honestly believes that if he isn't tough, he won't get things done. There are some people that think if the impression is given that they are listening to other people and are working things out, and the things we, we call a compromise, which means to work with uh, somebody, uh, that somehow that is less macho. Are you a macho man? Macho, as I said, macho is a, those guys with the three hundred dollar suits and uh, you know like they're in Chilean's drinking drinking. Uh, well, what what would you say, Chablis and you know all these uh, Brandy Alexanders probably at uh, four thirty and are over the craw daddies and those are the macho guys. So what are we going to see in campaign 1985? The combative arrogance of a Jimmy Griffin who said about this sculpture, Green Lightning, tear it down because I am the city? Or are we going to see a more restrained James Griffin, mayor of Buffalo? Despite this little cosmetic charade that we watched a few minutes ago, I don't think that that, that hides the real Jimmy Griffin. The real Jimmy Griffin never forgets who his enemies are, or as he says, his friends. To Jimmy Griffin, diplomacy and tact simply get in the way. He prides himself in being honest, brutally honest. And maybe that's why Harry Truman's picture hangs prominently on the wall of the mayor's office. He was a, a plain talking guy, and I think I am. He was a family guy, which I think I am, and he was an honest man, which I think I am. Buffalo Memories, staffannouncer.com.